All right, Dan here for Comic Frontline, and we are going to do our unboxing of the Pacific Rim Gypsy Danger figure. It is a pretty large figure. Uh, when I did my haul video, I showed you the box pretty much. But let's go through that again. Some impressive artwork on the back. And another nice picture on the front. And as we can see, this might be the end of the line for many of the uh, mint in box uh, collectors out there to uh, just look at him uh, through cellophane. But that is not the case for us here on Comic Frontline because we want you to see the actual figure. So, a little cutting of the tape. There's some tape at the top here. A little tape that I just cut right there. Just so you all know what you're in for. If you're going to unwrap this one, opens right up. Oh no, it's exposed to air. I can't sell it online for a huge amount anymore. Ugh. You're only going to live once. You're going to live and have a box, or you're going to have the actual figure. All right. He's coming out. Yeah, he's wired in there. No chance of him falling out. You know... I'll give it to them that uh, this is a pretty nice display in the back. Occasionally when they make these little dioramas. Because actually on the bottom here you can kind of see... Uh, kind of like, you know, the uh, military base type style of where they uh, had him. Oh boy. We are talking a lot of twist ties in the back here. Some of them are tied a little tighter, so then it becomes a little tougher to get your uh, cutting implement inside here. Maybe I should mention about Argo Comics right now. Argo Comics, Argo 5, that's the title. Book's title, Argo 5, number 11 is at the printer, due out April 9th. You can go to www.argocomics.com to find out more about Argo Comics. That is the comic line I produce. I believe I had a giant robot in issue 2. He was just not a, you know, he wasn't the main villain of the story, but there was a giant robot in that issue. All right. Twist ties are done. So we should be pretty good with getting Gypsy Danger out of it, the uh, packaging here. All right. Now I'm pulling out, as I said, pulling out some more twist ties. Some of them are kind of pulled up in the joints, so that's the ones that just try to pull gently to get the figure out, because, you know, this is like a very jointed figure. You can see in there if the wire is in that joint. You're going to have a heck of a time trying to pull it out, you know. In actuality, this is a robot that's been through a lot of battles. So, not that I want you to scratch the paint, but if it did happen, it wouldn't look entirely uh, uncharacteristic for the figure. All right. Let's see how these are being held in here. Because we got the figure out, but we have these blades that anyone saw the movie. It's kind of like uh, big saws that he uses. 
kind of on his fist a la Wolverine. Uh, Wolverine, I guess, has influenced a lot of things. All right, so we got two blades it comes with. In case you want him, you know, I'm sure it's pretty simple. Okay, now we got the figure. Let's give you comic frontline viewers a good view of this figure. Okay, Gypsy Danger again from the Pacific Rim movie. I'm going to try to get a lot of different angles for you. A very large figure which is appropriate. Ah, well, some of the detailing on the shoulder here, the numbering, a little close-ups here. You know, hydraulics and pistons and all that good stuff. I gotta say, one of the uh, most highly detailed figures I have seen, and quite a bit larger than your Galactus and Sentinel Builder figures. I don't quite know how it stacks up against the other uh, re releases of the Sentinels uh, that they came out with. Um, you know, they had some light activated and all that good stuff. Uh, now, I did not see directions on this at all because you do have batteries that go in this. I do see on the back here a screw and usually being that uh, there's no other place that it would seem the batteries might go into. I'm going to guess that is where you put them. Uh, all right, well, you know what? Maybe before we do that, though, maybe you want to see one of these uh, big saws go into where it's supposed to go into in the fist. So, okay, I'm going to have to look at it, but I could see that there's in here there is a hole in the wrist that this would be inserted into so putting that in there well hmm, it could be backwards so let's try it the other way because it isn't like really going in. Oh, you know what? There's also the possibility that we got a right and a left. So let me just give that a try. See if this one fits any better in the notch. No, nah, I gotta say they're both somewhat tight in there, but. I have to guess that, uh, you know, they don't want it coming out. So, there you have it. I mean, I'll show you where it connects right in there on the other side of the fist. Uh, okay, articulation people. I just pose it so I don't really care. I have to say range of motion seems a little low on this. Um, ankles don't seem articulated, knees look articulated, I'm sure they are, yeah, the knee is definitely bendable there, you know, the joints are pretty tight, which is good for me, because I am one to more display and not to really uh, have any adventures, oh, the blade came out, you may have to force that blade in a little more, uh, Okay, and yeah, we got some arm bending action here. So, again, I don't know about the head twisting. Yes, the head 
does indeed twist a little bit. Not that great a range of motion. All right. Taking this little plastic tab out is usually what does it for toys to have it uh, work. Got a little button back here. Okay, so you, Comic Frontline viewer, will be the initial viewer of this. Here we go. Whoa, okay. So again, they had that plastic tab in there, so this would not stay on like this. Okay. Mm. You got, the, for lack of a better term, a headlight, and of course the chest beam. Very good for when you have to go underwater for all those who had seen the movie, or when you're fighting at night, a uh, gaiju. Uh, all right. Like I said, you just have this little plastic tabby thing here. Okay, apparently the batteries are in. Don't be fooled by what it says in the box. Just got to pull this tab out of here. And then it is ready to go with the light action. All right. Uh, for those of you who saw my comic haul video, you know that I had picked up something at the comic store that I said I would save for my unboxing video. So let me grab this puppy right here. Oh boy. And here he is talking about giants and giant monsters. We have Godzilla. Okay, this was uh, a new, it's actually a bank, but, you know, aside from that uh, little hole, uh, this is really a pretty fantastic Godzilla piece. Uh, the tail, I mean, I have to pull back because it is... Not the smallest piece that there is. That tail is very cool. This is uh, more along the lines of the Godzilla I know and love. Uh, I'll give the new movie a chance, but let me uh, give you a little close-up there. I mean, great sculpting on the uh, face. He does not have... The vampire teeth, which I'm kind of like, I prefer a Godzilla that just has teeth like this. Not that big on that, like the big, big fangs. Um, and this chest doesn't have so much of like that. Some of them start looking like uh, three breasts uh, on Godzilla. And this chest is well sculpted. The legs and feet. I mean, this is the Godzilla I know and love that's now kind of reduced to uh, doing a Snickers commercial uh, in favor of the really super thick neck dude with the really overly chunky legs that's coming in the new movie. But that is my Godzilla that I know and love. And I have one more surprise for all you viewers. Just hang in there for a second. Let me set this up. This is a comic Frontline exclusive. So, hold up here. Okay, comic Frontline fans, get ready for this one. You're not going to want to miss it. Let me get the lighting right. I think you're all going to be happy to see this. All right, here we go. Get ready, Comic Frontline fans. It is the giant display of giant monsters. 
Okay. So who do we got here? Gigantor. My favorite giant robot from back in the day. I do have uh, another one that's kind of like blue, but I always remember as a kid seeing it in black and white. So I have a sentimental spot for the black and white version. We have that new Godzilla that I was just pointing out. Got this guy towering above them all. That's to show you how big this figure is. And then for all you comic fans, Big Guy from Big Guy and Rusty the Robot. Jeff Darrow creation. So let's see if I can get a nice shot of this all for you guys. Man, that freaking Gypsy Danger is a big mofo. Uh, let's see. How is that? That's like from above. See, it's hard to get them all in the shot. There we go. All right. The backdrop for all you wondering is my banner for Argo Comics. Again, you can go to ArgoComics.com to check that out. The publications I have. But for now, you can just kind of sit in the splendor of giant robots and monsters. King of the Monsters, Godzilla. All right. Rusty. I think you can actually press his button. Let's see what goes on here. Serious business. Uh -huh. One of those different phrases. Fire in the hole. Candy grab. For the love of Mike. It's actually a great animated series, that one. I mean... Actually, I think uh, Gypsy Danger is in scale, bigger, well, definitely than uh, Gigantor and Rusty, even bigger than Godzilla. So actually this display does make some sense as to being in a uh, correct proportion. But he just does not fit in the frame. All right, I'm going to leave you all with that. Remember to check out Comic Frontline. And I will see you all on the next haul or unboxing video. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.